He will exalt and honor you. We thank you for the privilege to come before your presence and to exalt you in the midst of the congregation of the saints, where your name is highly lifted up. Father, once again we have gathered to hear and understand prophecy. Like you told me that this word was given to save life right here on earth. Father Lord, we have gathered together to use your word as a life-saving grace for as many, O oh Lord God of hosts, that will care to listen. Let your word pierce every heart. Let it transform every soul. Let it witness to every conscience. Father, we cannot teach. It's only your spirit that can teach through us. We ask divine wisdom. We ask understanding from the Holy Spirit. We ask the grace to minister your word the way it is written and the way you want it to be ministered. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, you are welcome again to this Open House Fellowship. Today is Sunday. Where we use opportunity to understand biblical prophecy. Today we are looking at the book, part 2. Our special focus this evening is a preamble of what we stopped last week. But before we go there, we want to use opportunity to expose the mystery of the woman in Revelation chapter 12. The woman protects with the sun and the moon. And that is the woman that has the crown of 12 stars. But we're not talking of the woman in chapter 19 because we haven't gotten there. But today we want to use opportunity to expose the mystery behind the woman. Because we, when we took the trumpet judgment, we stopped in the prophets, the two witness prophets. We never took the woman in chapter 12. So today I want to go backward a bit since we don't have much to deal with when it comes to the final showdown of the book. So we want to use opportunity to explain the mystery behind the woman in Revelation chapter 12. Many people may have guessed one question or the other, say, who is this woman? And why was it tapped in this place? What is the mystery? What was it trying to explain to us? Today, God will open our eyes to decode this mystery. So as we try so hard to decode this mystery, we create your indulgence to try to listen. But before we continue, I just want you to understand you one particular word. That if this gospel was not given because God wants to torment anybody or he wants to accuse you of your sin. But this gospel was given to one for one reason and one reason only. To save life now on earth. And this gospel, the moment you listen to it, it will help not only you, but as many people to be able to save life in this present world. God bless you as you listen. Let's just use the opportunity to explain myself. I will be your minister for this evening. My name is Missionary Collins. I will be your host for this evening. So if you miss any of our past topic, you can still get it. The website are on display in your page. Just go to cgfnslogin.app. cgfnslogin.app. CGF is a non-denominational organization where we use opportunity to bring mission training to your living home. You may not have been able to leave your home to go to any church or mission school to study to be able to save life. But that's why in CGF we bring you to your doorstep. Every week like this, we train you on everything you need to understand to become a full-time missionary and how to be able to expose the entire biblical prophecy for you to know biblical prophecy are meant to be fulfilled. They are not just mysteries. So that is the purpose why we use the opportunity to expose it to you. God bless you as you're listening. Before we continue, let us bow our head with a short prayer. I know we have prayed before. In Jesus' name, Father, expose your word and make it known to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. First, let's take our Bible reading from the book of Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1. The woman in Revelation chapter 12. Let's read. The woman and the child and the dragon. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. 
and a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then, being with a child, she cried with a loud voice in labor and in pain to give birth. So, something here should tap you. Travel. A woman in labor. Where did you hear that word before in the scripture? Christ referred to it, and many prophets referred to it. A woman in travail. And Jesus told you when you see war, when you see abomination, when you see signs in the sky and the earth filming out wickedness, this is not sign for the end. These are the beginning of sorrow. It's like a travail upon a woman with charge that we start gradually and increase in intensity. So this intensity will keep increasing to the time of the end. That is exactly what this place is telling you about. The woman in travail. And this woman in travail is the purpose why this place was written. And questions simply remain. Who is the woman in this Revelation chapter 12 that was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet and on her head was a garland of twelve stars and she was in labor to give birth. Let's not struggle so hard. Let's go to Genesis and have Jacob in the book of Genesis, interpret this particular vision for us. Let Jacob do the interpretation on our behalf. So when Jacob discovered Rachel had a son, which was after he fled from Lebanon, and Joseph has grown to become a man, So Jacob, Joseph has a dream in Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, I will read from verse 6. And he said to them, Hear this dream which I have dreamt. I was binding shapes in the field, and beheld a leaf rose from and stood upright. And indeed, your shapes stood all around about and bowed down. On my shapes. And then the brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his word. And why they hated him, that does not stop Joseph from dreaming. In verse 37, verse, 10, verse 9. He dreamt still another dream and told it to his brother and said, Look, I have another dream again. And this time the sun and the moon and the level stars bowed to me. And he said to his father and his brother, His father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream you have dreamt? Shall your mother and I and your brother indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? 
what does Joseph say this woman in chapter 12 is? Joseph already explained it to us. What we have been struggling to crack our brain over of who this woman is, Joseph has explained. Who is the son? Israel. Joseph. He has said Joseph, sorry, Jacob. Israel. He is the son. And the moon. His wife. Or somebody will say, which of them? Joseph had four wives. Which of the wife is the son or the moon? See, Joseph is the son, it's established. He's one. But Joseph has four wives. So which of them? And that mystery can be very clear and easily understood. If you understand the mother of all human race. Then the Israel God was explaining from here did not start in that Genesis 17. It starts from Genesis 1. The mother of all human race, Eve. Somebody will not say, then that mystery is clear and well understood. And he said, the woman traveled with a child. Remember, she was pregnant. Who does she want to give birth to? Some people want to. Did Israel give birth? Some people will think, oh, this is the church. Other will say, this is the Messiah. Christ came from the tribe of Israel. That means Israel gave birth to the Messiah. And the Messiah in turn gave birth to the church. And this is the reason why we see the mystery behind this woman clearly understood by the travail of this woman in labor, when she cried to be delivered and pain to give birth. This woman gave birth to who? There appeared another sign before her given birth in heaven. Behold, a great and a fiery dragon, fiery red, half a seven head and ten horns and seven died on his head. We understood this clearly from the book of Daniel that this is the devil. That the seven head upon his head are seven kingdoms. They were originally ten, three fetch. Then they remain seven. And God explained it unto the Buchanizer also by the idol head and the chest and the image. So the vision throughout the Bible, they are consistent. So we understand it from that particular perspective that this dragon that appeared was the devil. And what was his purpose? Why did he appear at the same time this woman who was in travail, pains to be given birth? Let's go to verse 4. The Bible says this dragon did not fall alone. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, the third part of the star of heaven, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth and to divorce her child as soon as she was born. Hmm. This is quite a mystery for the Old Testament. Why is it brought into the New Testament? Does it have its future significance? Yes. Does it mean Jacob and Israel will wake up at the end of the world to fulfill this prophecy? No. And this woman, why is God explaining that mystery at the end of the tribulation? God is showing you something here. That the great tribulation is not without a motive. There is a motive. When Lucifer fell, he took down to ten of the angels of heaven. One third of the hosts of heaven fell with him. And another one, the Bible said, God reserved those angels under chains 
to the great and terrible days of the Lord. Because if he had left them without chains, no human being living on earth would have survived. If one devil can turn the world to what it is today, we wonder what two thirds of the whole angels, the one third of the whole angel would have done. So he threw them down to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth. He did not, remember, he did not attack the woman because he does not have the permission to. But he stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to divert who? The charge. The woman has not been the devil problem right from the beginning. Remember who this woman is when you read Genesis. I will put an immunity between thee and between who? The woman and the serpent. You will bruise his head. And what will happen to the seed of the woman? He will bruise the serpent's head. And he will, the serpent itself will bruise the woman heel. So that was the promise of God in Genesis. Because God honored his word more than his name. So this promise has been from the ancient time. God made it clear from Genesis that the seed of the woman that this woman was about to give birth to will bruise the head of the serpent. And we know who that seed was that finally bruised the head of the serpent. When he nailed sin to the cross, that was Christ. And that Christ, his birth was significantly explained here. But not explaining the personality of Christ, but the church which Christ gave birth to. Through the Holy Spirit, the mystery birth. And that is exactly what Christ was explaining. What this place was explaining to you. And this devil st stayed and waited for the church to be born first. To divorce Christ as soon as he was born. You knew what happened when Christ was born. Herod, acting under the influence of the devil, sent army into the town of Bethlehem to kill every child that was a year old and below. In the hope, three months old and below, to make sure that Christ was caught in the midst, according to the time he has inquired of the, the, the people that came from the east, the wise men, they came in search of a child to bless him. But Herod had material motive. He inquired of the time the sire appeared, and he sent Sodia to kill the child according to the number of the year the child the starts up here. That means the child could not escape within that bracket of age. That was exactly what the, the devil did when Christ was born. That shows you that the devil sat down to wait to divorce the child as soon as he was born. And that is the mystery that this place is explaining to you. And she bore a male child. She bore a male child. Remember, he did not say give birth to a boy child, a male child, who will rule the nation with a rod of iron. We know who that is. Just read yourself. Jesus Christ. And her child was caught up into heaven. What a minute. When Jesus rose from the dead, he was not being caught off. Every eye saw him. He walked in majestically into heaven. It's an ascension. Not cut off. But somebody else was cut off in the Bible. The church. The church was cut off to heaven. So obviously this is speaking about the rapture of the saints. The church was cut off. We were cut off before the great tribulation. And remember here. That's why many military claim that the rapture actually took place here. Because God said the church was cut up at this point. But remember, this is at the end of the tribulation. God is only explaining to you the events that took place. By a sign, you can watch in the sky and see. So it's not a symbolic thing that it happened in the mid-tribulation. So Christ or the church was cut up into heaven. And what happened? Remember the mother was not cut off with the church. Who gave birth to the church? Israel. Because Christ did not give birth to Israel. Israel gave birth to Christ. 
Israel was not part of the rapture. So they were still left here on earth in the tribulation. So the devil has one enemy now. Not the child, but the woman who gave birth to the child, which is Israel. So the battle over Jerusalem is what God is explaining here in this place. The battle of Megiddo. The battle over that small island, Jerusalem. Because the whole king of the earth will angry at the value of decision. This is the place the Bible was talking about. And that is the anger you see in their face. Because why? You gave birth to the Messiah who is coming to bruise my head. And so you will not go free. And the devil decides to attack the woman. And this woman, what happened? She was protected in the tribulation. So somebody wonder, is God Pasha? Why did he protect Israel, not the rest of the world? The reason is because they are the target of the tribulation. The great tribulation is not targeting the rest of the world. Those that fell by the sword, they fell on that coincidence. But it was targeted on Israel. So God decided to shake them from the tribulation. So let's read forward and see what God did. When the dragon discovered that the child was cut off to God and to his throne, what happened? The woman fled into the wilderness because she had no space, because the devil anger now was towards her. Yet she had a place that was prepared of God for her to be nourished. Remember the Bible made a city of refuge for Israel in the tribulation, Moab, Edom, and Ammon, where the Antichrist will not visit. That was a place God prepared for them in the wilderness, a place of refuge where the Antichrist will not visit. But when the devil discovered that she has run into the wilderness for a place prepared of God that she should be fed for 1,206 days, which is three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. But they did not prevail. And what happened? At this point, Satan threw out of heaven. Why? He was thrown out of heaven in a battle. But somebody said, We thought in Genesis, Satan has already fallen. Yes, before you get to Genesis chapter 3, Satan has already fallen. But what happened? Why is he having access to heaven again if he has fallen? Yes, he has access to heaven in the days of Job. He had access to heaven in the days of the apostles. He still has access to heaven till today. Because why? He is the accuser of the brethren. He accused them before God day and night. So he is not on earth. He is principality. There are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. They have access. Though they cannot longer live with the angels in heaven, but they can still enter. They can still visit heaven. They can still go there to accuse the brethren. But this time, when he strode down, he lose permanent rights. He no longer have access to heaven. And God is war broke out in heaven. This is the first time I'm hearing war in heaven. I thought heaven was a place of peace. There is no war there. But God is telling here and here war broke out in heaven. Because the angels say, no, Satan is no longer permitted to stay here. The kingdom of God has become the kingdom of God and his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. So you are no longer permitted here. He lost his right. And what happened? Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. But the dragon and his angel also fought back. And this is the first spiritual argument, the spiritual realm war that took place in the end of the war. So the great this battle was actually what is usher in the great tribulation. That the Bible called the great tribulation. If you see the reason why the anchor of the devil was boiling. Where anybody that called himself a Christian that he meet on the earth is going to be in serious trouble. That is the reason why. Because at this time he is thrown out of heaven and he lost his rights. And he lost all his authority. And he come here on earth and meet somebody that mentioned the name of God. What do you think he will do? This is the reason. So having said this, let's first say why. I know these things, it looks very frightening, no, but it's not 
intended to frighten anybody. It's just so that you can learn the truth and give your life to Christ. So that you can save your life now before it is too late. And this gospel was clearly written for our own teaching. They are for preaching the gospel. They are not written so that one man can put it in book for theological school. No. These things are written to be read in every Sunday service. To be used to teach the brethren so that they can know the truth. And the truth they know will set them free. And this war broke out. The dragon and his angel fought. But unfortunately, they did not prevail. And no was placed front for them anymore in heaven. Any longer. They lost the fight in heaven. Now that the devil has lost the fight in heaven, what do you think he's going to do? So great. So the great dragon was cast out. He was a great dragon. He was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. He who cast, he who was cast out to the earth and the angel were cast out with him. Remember when the devil was thrown down before and the fallen angel were reserved for that chain. But this time that they went and the family were cast out, they fell with all their angels. So there's not only one devil you have to contend with. You have to contend with his angel also. If one small demon can do havoc, what do you think millions of angels will be able to do? What was responsible for the earth becoming dissolute in general? In Genesis chapter 3 was the fall of Holy Satan. What do you think will happen? If 100,000 Satan were cast down to the earth. So this is what you see. These angels knew that there is no more hope for them in righteousness. There is no possibility of mending their ways with God. All that they do not have left is the taste for vengeance. Anger over God creation. And man was made in the image of God. So that makes man their enemy of our one. What do you think they will do to man? Now they have been thrown down. They lost their rights. They lost their authority. They lost all the grace of God upon their life. Now man is their only enemy they have. They cannot fight God because God has defeated them. They cannot fight Israel because Israel is protected. Divinely protected by angel in the tribulation. Then what do you think those that bear the testimony of Jesus Christ will face? What do you think those that say we don't need God will face? What do you think? You think the devil actually have friends? You are making a terrible mistake. There is no friend for him. Anybody born of a woman is his enemy. Because they have the right to bruise his head. And because they have the right to bruise his head, and he can only bruise their head, not their head, what do you think he will do? He's going to unleash all his anger. And look at what the Bible says about it. In verse 8, it says, They did not prevail, nor were their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast down, and the devil, who deceived the whole world. He is not true. The, the final fall of the devil is not longer in heaven. He is coming to live with man on earth. He was cast down. The man that deceived the whole world is not coming to stay with human beings. And as their king, and the Holy Spirit is not here to defend against him. He was cast down to the earth, and the angels were cast down with him. And what happened? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, just imagine, now salvation, freedom, even the end of the world is not only freedom for the inhabitants of the earth, it's also freedom for the inhabitants of heaven. And he is saying now salvation. Now salvation to the habitat of the heaven. He said, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So of his Christ have come. The, for the accuser of our brethren, the accuser of their fellow angels. Who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. 
The devil is the accuser. He's not today accusing men, he's accusing the angels too. Bringing their case before God day and night. He's finally thrown out of heaven. <laughs> For they overcame him. How? By the blood. They overcame him by the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Remember, God told David to lift up the serpent in the wilderness. The bronze serpent symbolized Satan being judged. And the same vein, Christ was hanged above the ground, lifted up on the tree, since being judged, which is the product of Satan. And God says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man will be lifted up. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, was lifted up above the ground so that sin can be crucified and sin receive the appropriate judgment that was made for it. Now sin and devil has been defeated. Finally, at the end of the world, what do you think they will do to the inhabitants of the earth? For they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And they did not love their life over death. <laughs> they did not love their life to the death. Because they loved their life. And they were not afraid to die. So because of that, that is how they overcame the devil. So we Christians can also overcome the devil the same way. By not loving this present world. By not falling in love with our life that we are afraid to die. If you are afraid to lose your life, you will lose it. But if you lose it only for the sake of Christ, you will get it. So that is exactly fear put people in captivity. But you can only overcome fear by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. By not loving your life unto death. But fully committed to the saving grace of the blood of Christ. That you can redeem your life from the hands of the evil one. And look at what he said here. Now heaven is free. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb because Jesus is still there. But what happened to the inhabitants of the earth? But what did he say? Therefore rejoice, O ye heaven, and all you that dwell in them. Who are now the people that dwell in heaven? The angels should rejoice. Satan is thrown out. The elders, the church, the mystery church, has been raptured up to heaven. They are now living with God. They should rejoice. And the day that we are beheaded in the tribulation, they are now in heaven. They should rejoice. The dead in Christ, they are left. They are not in heaven. They should rejoice. The prophets and those men of old who lived a just and a faithful life, they have been raptured. They are not there. They should rejoice. But what happened to the rest of the dead? What happened to the rest of the inhabitants of the earth? Who will know about it? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Not only the earth, even the sea. Woe unto you. For the devil has come down to you, having a great wrath, because what? He knows he has only short time, three and a half years. That is all he has. Between three and a half years, his authority is over. He has only three and a half years to So this time is not only for you to lack his reign, so that you will not give him a crown at the end of three and a half years. He is ruling in anger, and he beat his prisoner with continuous strokes. So that is how he's going to rule. Just imagine today world where you have one dictator can make a whole nation cry. How many do you think about 350,000 devil in the world? It's not only the devil you should be afraid of. The ended that have lost all the beauty of heaven. They lost all the glory of heaven. Now you now think here and see the amazing grace and want to go to heaven. And you think they will let you enter heaven. The deception you have never seen since the earth began. Is going to be unleashed. And remember what he said here. He said, Go to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. 
For the devil has come unto you, having a great wrath. Anger. Anger of losing the battle in heaven is with him. Now he's still celebrating, he's not angry yet. But when he finally lost the battle, he knows there is no more hope for him. He is coming for you. Because he knows he has only a short time to live. So he doesn't want to go to hell alone. What do you think he will do with his short time? And when he discovered he was thrown down, what did you think he do? First, he started with the woman. Remember the woman that gave birth to Jesus Christ, who they overcome him with his blood, and by the blood of his testimony, and by the word of his testimony, because the Lord moved their life unto death. That same woman is still on earth, Israel. He gave birth to Christ, and Christ has bruised his head and thrown him down from heaven. He's coming for Israel. Now, when the dragon saw that he has been cast down to the earth, he persecuted that woman, Israel, that gave birth to the Messiah, who gave birth to the male child, Jesus Christ. And but this woman was given two wings, like the wings of an eagle. Remember, they were supernaturally protected by angels in the tribulation, the one hundred forty-four thousand. So. She might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time, half a time, protected to her tribulation. Then when you discover that she has escaped, the serpent did not give up. He did something else. The serpent poured out water like a cloud, flood after the woman. Water is an idiom, symbolizes people, multitude, nations. He gathered the whole nation of the world against one tiny small city, Jerusalem, Israel. If I cannot get you, your people will get you. If you are protected from me spiritually, let's see whether you will be protected from the battles that are coming your way. He gathered all nation together against them in battle. <laughs> but you know something strange happened. The earth came to the head of the woman. The earth. The earth dwellers. Came to the head. What? How would the earth help? They came to the head of the woman. And the demon might cause her to be carried away with the floor. But the earth helped the woman. And open her mouth and swallow up all the floor. The ground open up and divert all the soldiers and descend into them. What? God? Even the earth is angry with the devil. <laughs> he overcame. They did not overcome by their sword or by their army, but the ground came to their head and devoured all of them. So, this woman, what happened to her? And swallow up all the multitude. And when the dragon was, the dragon was enraged with the woman, he discovered that he could not defeat the woman again. He has lost the battle, the first battle in heaven, he lost the second one on earth. He could not defeat the woman. What do you think he's going to do next? He went to make war with the rest of her seed. Who are these seed? Who are these seed that the devil is going to make war with? The children of God. The children of God, he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the testimony, the commandment of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. We know who those are, the Christians who were saved in the tribulation. They keep the testimony of Jesus Christ and of God. Remember, they were not protected like Israel was. And it's going, the Bible said there was going to be a great tribulation, such as has never been since there was a nation. Now, let's go to 13 verse 1. It said, The beast from the sea stood out of the sand, and I saw the beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And his horn has ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. So this beast could 
clearly be referred to the same beast in Daniel that rose out of the sea. I said this one has a blasphemous name. And who was he blaspheming against? He blasphemed against the saints that was formerly on earth, now they are in heaven. He blasphemed against God and he blasphemed against his throne. He was given a blasphemous name to blaspheme against God. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard and a feed. A leopard. We remember that beast that looked like a leopard in Daniel chapter 5 or 4. Then, and his feet was like unto a bear, and his mouth as it was the mouth of a lion. But the dragon gave him his power and his authority, his throne and his authority. He gave him power, throne and authority. That is Lucifer transferring his throne first time in history. It's not for good to the Antichrist. And his throne was given to him to do wonders. Was so that he can afflict pains on people's life. That is why his throne was given. And this particular beast that came out of the sea, remember, they all have seven heads. Why was it having seven heads? These seven heads are seven kingdoms. They are seven kingdoms. And the Bible makes it clear, ten horns are ten kings that will rise one hour with the Antichrist. So these ten horns are symbolic of ten authority, ten kingdoms that will reign the same hour or the same spot time with the Antichrist. And on his head, they all work for the, who? the devil. And on his head, a blasphemous name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. That was the description of the beast. He might be called a beast here, but he's not going to appear to you on the last day as a beast. He's going to be a charismatic leader. That means he's a head, a word, power. So this angel here, using inanimate to qualify animate thing, was a specific characteristic, not the personality. And they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. They worship the dragon. Who is the dragon? We know who he was. The devil, the ancient serpent that was cast down in Genesis. He is not being worshipped by the world. He could not get the worship he wanted in heaven. Now he has come to man to get it. So he got the worship on earth. Because that is the only way for the earth to stay alive. They have to dance to his tomb. And Satan did worship. So worship was a way of saving their life. They worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast also. They answer Christ. Say who is like unto the beast. Just imagine. Who is able to make war with him because he has won many wars. But remember he could not win the one in heaven. Neither could he win the one against Israel. So, he was given a mouth to speak great things. Mouth of blasphemy. What was he speaking great things against? Great things and blasphemies. He was given authority to continue for 40 and 2 months, 3 and a half years. The same period of the Great Tribulation. All these things we mentioned, they happen constantly within the period of 3 and a half years. The Great Tribulation. The fallen angels, the aliens manifesting themselves, false Christ arising, false demons manifesting as Christ, as prophets, they all happen within this space of three and a half years. And that is the most darkest period in the history of mankind. <clears throat> Including God pouring down his wrath, still within this same period. And then, he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and those who now live in heaven. They have escaped his wrath. 
the church. The church escaped him. So now he blasphemed them also. He's not only blaspheming the God, they were part of the people that made judgment in heaven to send him out. So he says he has been cast out. He blasphemed God, he blasphemed God's room, and he blasphemed against the church. So this is exactly what he does. And he was granted to him to make war with the saints. Strange enough. Remember the Bible says, let the saints cease rejoicing in glory. Let it sing the loud upon their coaches, and let the high praise of the Lord fill their mouths. With two edged sword upon their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains, and their rulers with fatters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have we the saints. Then why would the saints? Will he be able to make war with the saints and overcome? Does God go back on his word? No. Because God sent the true saint of God. Remember the Bible says, Blessed are those who take place in the first resurrection, for these are the true saints of God. God has taken his true saints. All these saints you overcome are the saints in the tribulation. They were not recognized as the true saints of God. They were part of the people that may be powerly that cry with a loud voice, who will be beheaded in tribulation, who have to enter heaven with their own blood. These are the people that the devil has authority to make war with and overcome. So, if you are very good in casting out demon, I'm sorry for that. This time of the end, your casting out demon will no longer work because demon will cast you out because they have power to make war with the saints and overcome. So, if you are a church that is hoping, pray with your member to be on earth when these things will happen. I wish you good luck. So this is exactly what is written. And the Bible makes it clear to us. He has authority to make war with the saints and overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe. So there is no part, whether you are Christian, Islam, Buddha, whatever tribe you belong, he will make war with you and overcome. Authority is given to him by God to make war with all the tribes of the earth and overcome them. And over in tongues, it doesn't matter your language, over nations, he has authority over the whole world for the space of three and a half years. And all who dwells on earth you will worship him. As long as he lives in the earth, you will worship him. You have no choice. He is the only God that is accepted. Emperor worship. It happened in the ancient time. Now he's going to be repeating it. You are not going to be worshiping idol. He, he doesn't even believe in idol. You are going to worship him in person, not idol. And all that dwell in the earth worship him, whose name was not written in the book of life, and of the Lamb. Slave from the foundation of the world. If your name is not in the book of the life, you will worship the devil. The only people that will not worship are those whose name is found in the book of life. And if anyone has an ear, let him hear. What should you hear? Whenever you hear that word in the Bible, God is about to drop a mystery. If you have ear, you should hear. So that means anybody that in this message is meant for is anybody that knows he has ear to hear. Let him lead. He who lead into captivity is in this time, thinking it is normal. I am fighting on behalf of the Antichrist, which is the Christ of that time or the God of that time, <laughs> will himself go into captivity because the devil doesn't have friends. He who kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. And here is the patience and faith or the endurance of the saints. I, and that is one thing you must learn at this crucial times in your life. The patience and endurance of the saints will be tested as it has never been tested from the foundation of the world. Things will happen to the extent you begin to doubt if God actually exists. And there is going to be sign to prove otherwise. You will see the Antichrist able to raise the dead. 
you will see the satans begin to perform so much wonders as if it were possible they would deceive even the elect of God. This is things. Things will happen this time. That the world, when they see it, they will, they will cry out and say, indeed, this is the God we have been waiting for. He's going to regenerate the world and develop the entire human race in less than a week. And this man is going to be a king that people will suffer. The whole earth will worship him. And they bow to him. And the Bible says, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. Remember, the first beast came out of the sea, which was the Antichrist. But this one now is coming from the earth. And who has to hold? Like who? Like Jesus Christ. A lamb. <laughs> He's coming like Christ. He's looking like Christ. Humble like Jesus Christ. Remember, the first one was a national leader who was conquering to conquer. But this one now is what? A religious leader. Hmm. He has to hold like the Lamb, like Jesus Christ. And he spots like dragon, the first prophet. And he has exercised the authority of the first beast, the Antichrist. This first prophet was actually the one that made the people of the world believe that the Antichrist was the first to record it. They first the people of the world to worship this beast. So they are going to come in Christian clothes, but they are wolf in sheep clothing. That is how they are going to appear. They are going to teach you the doctrine, salvation, knowledge, peace, but all for one selfish aim to lead you to the devil. Remember what? These things have already started. Remember what the Bible told you? It said your head of that wicked one will be revealed. Whose coming is after the working of Satan with all deceivable signs and works of disobedience in those that will perish. He said, but I tell you right now, he's already in the world. That man of sin. The days of the Lord will not come until the end be falling away first. So these things will happen. And that is exactly why you must be more with it. And he said in verse 13, in chapter 13, verse 12, he exercised the authority of the first moon, the first beast, in his presence and caused the earth to worship. Remember what he did? He made the people that live on the earth because he appeared like Jesus Christ. He was so holy and nice, pure in heart. Peaceful. The people of the earth say this from Jesus Christ. He made them to worship the first beasts. Remember what Jesus told you in the book of Matthew that if they tell you here is the Christ, don't go out. If they tell you that he's in the winter room, do not go. If they tell you he's in the wilderness, don't go out. Because many false Christ and false prophets at this time will arise. They will deceive many. If it were possible, they will deceive even the elect of God. And who dwells in it worship the beasts, and the whole deadly wound was healed. Remember, this beast was come to be known as a figure to reckon with, because many think he died, he rose up again, just like Jesus Christ. Some think he was wounded to the dead, like the Bible said, but the deadly wound was healed. People begin to take mark in allegiance to the beast. So many people today are writing books about chief Satan. Those might be tools the devil will use, but they are not the mark. It is not human mark we are talking about here. It is the devil mark. So it is his mark, not your mark. In verse 13, he made it clear. He performed great sign so that he even made fire come down from heaven. Even to the earth in sight of men. So much sign was performed by this devil to the extent fire even come down from heaven to burn those who does not trust him. So, 
And he deceived those who dwell on the earth by the sign and by the great miracle he performed. For he even granted unto him in the sight of the beast, telling those that dwell on the earth to make an image unto the beast who was wounded with the sword, and yet is still alive. He was wounded, shot to death, but he still lived. He didn't die. He refused to die. He raised in power. <laughs> Make image to him. And the people of the earth obeyed. And he was granted power to give birth, breath to the image of the beast. That is power to idol to live was given to him. Why? He can do anything. The Holy Spirit is out of the earth. The devil is able to give life. Now he started it. Because the Holy Spirit is no longer here to reprove his wickedness. To give life to the image, either in form of 3D or virtual reality, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause many who will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And it costs all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to give a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. What? That no man living on earth will be able to buy or sell, except he has the mark of his name, the name of the beast, and on the number of his name. The mark or the number of his name. So it's not the mark of your gold or your credit card, but the mark of his name and the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Whenever you hear this word in the scripture, a great enigma is about to be revealed. He said, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of a man. The number is six, six, and six. Remember. The number of God is seven complete. A man, the distance between six and seven, just as he proved in the intervals, is wide and great. The number of man is six. Man was created in the sixth day. So there is a big gap between six and seven. So there is difference between God and man. No matter how powerful this man, Antichrist, may appear to be, he is going to rule and not as a man. So these are three trinity. Three. The, just like you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You have the first prophet, the Antichrist, and Lucifer, all ruling as the format of a man. That is the meaning of six sisters. Now, 14 from verse 1. He said, The Lamb and his world ran 44,000. Now, Jesus is appearing in the heavenly realm, dominion. The lamb and his hundred and forty-four thousand. But somebody wonders, this has not been raptured yet. Remember, they still live during the tribulation. Why did they appear in Messiah? Because Christ has come down to the earth. He may not have come as the earth expects to save him, but he's already fighting on behalf of Israel. And then I look and behold, the lamb standing on Messiah. With him, a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name on their foreheads. Remember the mark of God, the seal was sealed upon the hundred and forty four thousand. And what was this seal? We were not being told is the name of the father, of the name of God himself was written on their forehead. So that's why the devil could not touch them throughout the tribulation. So, and I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many water, like the voice. Of a loud thunder, and I heard the sound of the harpies playing their harps. The harpies was busy playing their harp. They were celebrating on Messiah. Oh, somebody wonder. I said maybe this Messiah is in heaven. No, Messiah is on earth. It's in Jerusalem, in the south of Judah, not in heaven. Christ came down to meet them there. At this time, if Question, Christ has come. The battle of Megiddo, he has to be on earth to prepare for the battle at Megiddo. So he has come to rapture the 144,000 with him to prepare them for battle. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the living creature. 
and the elders are one who would learn that song. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. God was a mystery behind their power. They were redeemed from the earth. They were saved throughout the tribulation. God proved his power in the midst of dangers. And there are these ones who were not, who are these 144,000. Remember what God said in the Bible when Isaiah cried out to God and said, God, when Jezebel was pursuing him and he was afraid of his life before he was raptured to heaven, he said, God, they slay that prophet with the end of the sword. I alone am left. And they sought my life also. God said, No. I still have 104,000 that has not, I still have 10,000 prophets that has not bound their knees in Israel. So when you think there was no man left in the land, God still has thousands, hundred thousand. God is saying to you, that's why the sins in this end time, that's why the evil that takes place in the world, that's not all kind of things you can not even imagine exist that are happening. God still has people in the earth. And God was able to righteous 104,000 from the tribe of Israel alone. 104,000. We are not talking of the rest part of the world. Because the Bible says the rest of the world will be multitude which no man could know about. That we are saved through the tribulation. God saved 104,000 from only the tribes of Israel. And remember what he said. These were redeemers from the earth. These were people who were not defied with women. These were virgin unto God. And this, we are one who, who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. From the foundation of the world, they were not fall to sin. Remember, they were not saved by grace. They were saved by holiness. They were saved after the laws of Moses, after the ordinance of Moses. So it's still possible. God saved them through the law. No sin was found in them. They were not defiled with women. They were virgin before God. What? In this world? Yes. God saved them. And these people, they were one who followed the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit of God. And from the Lamb. And to the Lamb. And their mouth was formed no deceit. No lie was formed in them. For they were without fault before the throne of God. These people were not saved by grace. They were saved from by their work. No sin was found in them. Remember what he said. I will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Neither will God do wickedly. And these are people that were no fault found in them. No sin was found in their hand. They were without fault before the throne of God. 144,000. They are not talking about people. <laughs> Somebody said, the evil yet is too much. God still has more than 144,000 who has not defined himself with women. Who no sin was found in them. Who were virgin before God. No deceit. No thoughts before them. And then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having a everlasting gospel. This is the last message. For all human race. And what was this gospel? To be preached to all that dwell on the earth, to every nation, to tongues, to tribe, and to the people. That is the people he's declaring this message to. Now, remember, now we have evangelist missionary that preach the gospel. But this time, this gospel will be preached by angels because no evangelist can walk the street. And this message is simple. And another angel following, say, Remember what this preacher said, these preaching angels, with a loud voice saying, Fear God and give him glory. For the hours of his judgment has come. And worship him who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the spring of water. That is the message. It's simple. That is the gospel. 
And I believe that should be the gospel of a Christian in this letter. And the gospel is simple. Tell the people, fear God and give him glory. Churches, fear God and give him glory. Nations, fear God and give him glory. People, fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment will soon come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the spring and the body of water. Worship him. That is the gospel he has for us in this revelation. Men fear God. Remember what the Bible tells us, knowing the terror of the Lord, we will persuade men. If you understand the terror that God is about to unleash, you have no choice but to persuade men. And another angel follows saying, Falling, Babylon is falling and is falling. That great city, because he has made all the inhabitants of the earth drink of the wine of the wrath of our fornication. And the third angel follow, saying with a loud voice, Everyone who worship the beasts and his image. And receive his mark on his forehead. The same of him. And he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full of strength into a cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brace too in the presence of his holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment are sent forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. There is no hope, nothing for you anymore. Your salvation is buried. Your hope of saving is over. If you worship the beast or you take his mark. And here is the presence, is the patient of the saints. What is the patient of the saints? Here are those who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ and the faith of God. Those who keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Then I hear the voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from henceforth. That they may rest from their labor. They are reward for them. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their work from them. So do not be afraid to die for what you believe in in this end time. Because that is something you have to learn. If you are trying to save your life, you will lose it. If you lose your life willingly for the sake of Christ, you will get it. Mm -hmm. Reaping the earth's harvest has come. In chapter 14, verse 14, when we look, we behold a white cloud. And the cloud, one who sat on it was like the Son of Man, having in his hand a golden crown, and on his head a sharp sickle. And I heard the angels came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud. Trust in your sickle and reap. For the time has come to reap. For the heart harvest of the earth is ripe. He who sat in the crowd, trod in his sickles, trod in his sickles on the earth, for the earth was ripe, reaping the grape of rot. Yeah, remember we talk about we have two harvests in the Bible. We have the wheat harvest and the grape harvest. This grape harvest is not the harvest of the saints. It is the harvest of abomination. Gather the chaps that are left and born with unquenchable fire. This is the harvest here. It's not the harvest to gather people to the heaven. This is the harvest of the earth. To harvest their sin together and to give them punishment that is due for their sin. This is the grape harvest. It's not the harvest you want to be part of. And so, the angel that sat on the clouds is being told to reap the earth because the earth is ripe. 
Remember why you think sin is abundant in the world today. All evils, even the one man cannot measure, are happening. The earth is still not right. But when the earth is right, is when the kings of the earth gather themselves together and say, Let us remove God's rule from our head. Let's take the earth for ourselves. Let's remove God's name from our history. The earth is not our own home. That is when the earth will be right. And that is when God will cause his judgment to fall. But now, with all their evil, it's still not right. Remember what God said to Moses, you cannot go in now into the land of the Amorite because the iniquity of the Amorite was not your food. God is waiting. God does not bring his judgment to people that does not deserve it. So until the harvest of the earth is ripe, the judgment of God cannot fall. So people wonder, eh, when will God come? Yes, God can afford to come even today. But until the harvest of the Lord is truly ripe, he cannot execute judgment. And it make it clearer here. Another angel cried and he sat on the cloud, trusting the sickle and reap. For the sickle. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, he also having a sharp symbol. And another angel came out of the altars, who has power over fire. He cried with a loud voice for him who had a sharp sickle. Say, trust in <coughs> your sickle and gather the crust out of the vine of the earth, for the grape are fully ripe. Remember what we told you, this is a grape harvest. And the angels trust in the sickles into the earth and gather the vine of the earth and threw them into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And we know where this wine press is, it's not in heaven. The wrath of God, my Christ, is in Magido, the valley of Magido, that overrun the valley of Jesus, of Jezreel. <laughs> That's why the Bible calls it the mountain, the valley of decision, where a nation, multitude upon multitudes are cast down in the valley of decision. So that is the place where God rocks will be met upon the nations. So God is using his angel to gather all the nations, all the people that remain in the tribulation. That's a worshiper of Antichrist, taking the mark of the beast, following the devil to do all his evil deeds, and they bring them to the place where their grave will be fully ripe. Measures where they will gather together and say, let's take Messiah for ourselves, even when Christ is dead. That is when their grave will be fully ripe. And then God will give them the, the, the judgment that they are due for. Them. And they gather them together into the valley of the wrath of God. So it is not a matter of choice. You are being gathered and being thrown to my kingdom. That's what the Bible says there is slaves, there is king, there is captain, there is governor, there is president. Everybody will go with one anger. We want to go and destroy Jerusalem. So that is the final battle. So they will be gathered together in that valley, in the white press of the wrath of God. <laughs> and the Bible says, and the white press was trampled outside the city, and blood came out even to the horse bridle, to the waist of the horse, blood. We are talking of over 1,000 followers, horse rack, filled with blood to the extent it reached the horse bridle. Blood feed run to the essence. Even to the essence, the remnant of Christ that was shining like light was stained with blood. Came out of the wine press, even to the horses' bridle, for a thousand six hundred followed. That is the length of Mount Gideon. That is what will happen to those who refuse. Now we have just concluded that particular part. Now we just run through the prologue of the book. So let's understand what he's saying here in the book. And when I heard the seven, when I heard the last voice from the temple saying, to the seven angel, go and pour out the bow of rocks upon the earth. 
And the first bow was lost some soul. Remember, we dealt with the first bow to the sixth bow. What we are left with is the seventh bow. Remember what we said happened between the sixth and the seventh bow. After the fifth, the sixth bow was poured. Then there arise a demon army upon the earth who tormented the people that lives on the earth for five months. Then, now the seventh bow. Then I heard the angels pour out. The angel pour out his bow into the air. The seventh bow was not poured upon the earth, but it was poured on the air. Why was it poured on the air? And I heard loud voices coming out of the temple of heaven. And from the throne say it is done. Why? Why was it poured upon the earth? Not upon the land or the sea. Because the prince of the earth, the prince of the power of the earth is Lucifer himself. The same man that deceived the entire human race. That was where the final bow was poured on. So the final bow is the judgment of Satan and his agents. And he was poured into the air. And the last voice came out of the temple in heaven, saying it is done. And there were noises, thundering, lightning, and there was a great end to it, such as has never been. <laughs> such great and earthquake, such mighty and great earthquake, and it had, as it had not occurred since men were on earth. We are not talking of earthquake of 10,000 being killed. We are talking of earthquake that has, man has never witnessed. Since the entron was born. That is the earthquake that will happen when this final door is thrown out upon Satan Kingdom. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the city of the nation fell. The great Babylon, the Babylon, the mysterious Babylon, the seat of the Antichrist, became a remembrance before God before God, and to give the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, that the very every island of the earth flews away, and the four things were not formed, the mountains were not formed, hail from heaven fell upon men, each hail was about the weight of a talent, talent is quite big, it's more or less like a football, hail is the sign of a football, Bing, from up, of men and men blasphemed God because of the place of the hill, since the bread was exceedingly great. Mm. So it was not just a child's play. I believe we will start from chapter 17 next week. So this is where we conclude today's teaching. God bless you as you participate. Before we pray, I just want to use the opportunity to invite you. If you are a member, you are listening to me right now, this evening by 8 o'clock, we have a meeting, a monthly meeting which was supposed to take place yesterday, will be taking place, you can just go to the link that we have provided, then come to our meeting where we discuss the oncoming conference, God bless you as you participate. If you have missed any part of this video or this teaching of Revelation, you can still see it on our website at cgfnslogin.app. If you miss any part, go to cgfnslogin.app. If you have any question, go to our email at info at cgfnslogin.app. Then, on Tuesday, 7 p.m. is our time we normally gather together for the same word of God to teach the gospel and to make it known to you the mystery of the word of God and to prepare you for mission so that you also will be able to escape such things that are coming upon the earth and so you'll be an ambassador remember what the Bible said they that turn many to righteousness shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness like a star forever so if you are able to turn many to righteousness you will be like a star before God and God is going to make you a star today let us pray Father, we thank you for whom you are. We thank you because we know your rights. Help us to use it to persuade men. Help us 
this word not to be wasted, not for us to take it lightly. The things written here are frightening. But Lord, we do not want to be on earth when it happens. So do we not want our brother. So do we not want our sister. So do we not even want our enemy to be on earth when this happens. Father, we pray that you draw all men to yourself. That your wisdom be sufficient for them. Father Lord, as many that are lost, O oh Lord, use your hands of power to draw them. As many that are deaf that cannot hear what I say, Lord, let their ear be open to hear the word of God. As many that are blind that they cannot see to understand what are written, Father Lord, let their eyes be open to see and to learn what you have to say. Father Lord, as many that are sick that cannot get up from the sick bed to listen to your word, let them be healed right now so that they can be strengthened to listen. As many that are poor, that their poverty is deafening them, preventing them from concentrating. Father Lord, let there be a divine and supernatural provision. As many that are lacking the fruit of the womb and the things are beginning to lose sense and taste to, their, to them. Father, tonight I decree, O oh Lord, there is none barren in the land. No one among us cast his young. Therefore, O oh Lord, release children in abundance to them. These are us through Jesus Christ our Lord. As many that are looking for life partner, they struggle day and night. No man is telling them how far. But now today, 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 not tomorrow, I decree and I declare that today men, women will begin to approach them. As many men that are in the crisis, looking for a life partner, women will begin to approach you from today. Men will begin to approach you from today. Men that God will send, men of character, men of divine wisdom, God will send them your way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree peace to them that are in captivity. I decree hope to the hopeless, strength to the weak, receive the grace to excel. This I ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. Brethren, this is where we end our testimony for this night. We'll see you shortly in Jesus' name. Amen.